Hey everybody, Dr. Axe here. Welcome to the show. Today I have a guest that I've known for a very long time because it's my brother, Dr. Jordan Axe. Dr. Jordan is a functional medicine doctor who practices in Tampa, Florida, and he's an expert in taking care of conditions such as autoimmune disease, hypothyroidism, adrenal fatigue, Lyme disease, and much more. Also, he's an expert in clinical testing, and he runs one of the uh, world's most uh, really prestigious functional medicine online clinic. So people actually call in from all over the world, do vi virtual consultations with him and his team. Dr. Jordan, uh, my brother. Hey, welcome to the show, buddy. Awesome. Thanks for having me back again. Yeah. Well, I know last time you were on, we talked a lot about hypothyroid. We talked some about adrenals. And today we're going to talk a lot about functional medicine. We're going to talk about testing and we will get into a lot of the conditions related to autoimmune disease and other things, but we're going to talk about some of these holistic treatments such as ozone and a whole lot more. Um, to kick us off though, tell us a little bit about yourself and your clinic, and then let's go ahead and dive in and start talking about testing and treatments. Yeah, absolutely. You know, a lot of my background really is uh, personal experience. A lot of people is like, oh, you know, what seminar did you or what school did you go to for that? I'm like, no, I've the ozone, you know, I've done all of it on myself. And, um, you know, you were there for it really. And when I was younger in uh, seventh grade, eighth grade, just chronic sinus infections, acne all the time, then eczema. I always had some weird infection, always going to the doctor. And then, you know, it started to affect my sleep. I was tired all the time. And, um, you know, even having trouble gaining, you know, people are trying to lose weight, get mad when I say this, but, you know, trying to, I'm trying to gain weight. Like, you know, when you're in high school and you're really skinny all the time, that's not enjoyable either, to be honest. Um, and so, yeah, just not sleeping and, you know, it just, it just kept getting worse. They kept putting me on di doxycycline and antibiotics and, um, then eventually getting diagnosed with Hashimoto's thyroiditis, an autoimmune condition, and which is really driven by gut issues which you really helped me learn a lot about when I was young. Um, and it was my own journey trying to figure out how to clear up the eczema, how to uh, overcome and reverse the autoimmune issue. And, um, you know, just searching for different treatments and figuring out what works, what doesn't work. And that's kind of what led me into uh, wanting to start a functional medicine practice and kind of put all the pieces together because you know, I'm, I'm a realist. I know we work a lot. It's the, the, the diets are hard. There's a lot of things in our way. So I enjoy making it things work for the working person, the person that works 60 hours a week. And, you know, they need little tricks and tips to make it actually work in their life. Yeah. I think Jordan, one of the things I've been so impressed with you is, is that, you know, you overcame autoimmune disease yourself. You overcame Hashimoto's, uh, Hashimoto's thyroiditis. I know that we, you and I were together one time. Now, this was probably 15 years ago, but if you remember, we were in uh, Florida down in um, Naples and you had the blood work done and they found Lyme in your blood, uh, you, you know, Parasites. Lyme disease. And so, I mean, you've overcame everything from Lyme disease to Hashimoto's thyroiditis to numerous infections and things that you've dealt with over the years. And now yeah. you're super healthy. You're super happy and you're working and helping helping thousands of patients overcome chronic health conditions that I know you have people come on all the time who have said, Hey, I've been to 10 different doctors. I've been to holistic doctors. I've been to the conventional medical system and I'm still not getting well. And you've been able to help mm -hmm. them. And because of it, again, I know that I refer people yeah. to you and your, uh, your virtual clinic all the time because yeah. you have seen such good results with yourself. And I think there's something I've heard a doctor say before, uh, a person that we are both friends with. And, and I remember him saying this once he says, you know, one of the, one, one of the greatest things is when a doctor can overcome a disease themselves, because then they really truly have understanding over the condition. I see that's one of the things I know that, that you have is a sort of understanding because you mm. changed your diet. You took the supplements, you did the treatments to heal. And so let's walk through some of those. So both yourself in the past. And when you do a virtual or in-person consultation now, what are some of the most critical exams and different types of blood work you do in terms of diagnosing the condition? Because that's really where it starts, right? Yeah. You don't know the proper treatment protocol until you get the proper diagnosis. Yep, absolutely. I like to have you know at least 60, 70% of the information up front so I can put a six month game plan together because for me, it's, it's very hard to move forward with something if I don't understand 
what's going to come, right? It's like, I like to read the, when I read a book, I like to read the outline first. So I know what I'm getting myself into. So that's why I think having the information up front is so important. And, you know, there's two main tests I like to start people with just to get a majority of the information, you know, blood work, you know, you can look at hormones, you can look at thyroid levels, autoimmune markers, um, but you're very limited in what you can get in actual blood. So we do a lot of times um, now our organic acids test, which is a urine test, basically shows you what's inside your cell. So the blood shows you what's outside the cell in the blood that shows you what's in the cell. And that'll show us candida markers. And is it mild, moderate, severe? So we know how long to treat it. It'll show us vitamin markers. Um, I know we talked about this a little bit last time. Um, neurotransmitter markers, liver pathway markers. So it tells us how to make your cells function better. And if your cells function better, your organs function better. If your organs function better, your body functions better, right? So I like to start with that in a really, really good history. So I, like I picked, you know, my two favorite, you know, tests, a really good history. And then we outline what the next six months is going to look like. And that six months might say, hey, we're going to, you know, heal your gut with the right diet. We're going to fix all the deficiencies on the organic acids test. We're going to get your hormones balanced. Okay. And in five months, then we might do a stool culture test or some more advanced test, but at least we have a visual of how to get you 80% better. We have 80% of the information from the beginning. Yeah. Yeah. I, th I think these are, these are, these are, are great things to do. I want to talk about a few tests in particular. I know you run. Yeah. I want to start off with a micronutrient test. Talk to me about, or and I know there's different names, yeah. micronutrient, organic acids, but talk to me about that yeah. test. And first yeah. off, why don't more doctors do this test? Because to me, this should be sort of like the basic test almost yeah. everybody gets. Yeah. So the uh, super interesting about micronutrient testing, you know, when you do blood work, it just shows how many how much vitamin C is in your blood. What a micronutrient test does is it actually takes your uh, lymphocytes, your cells, and it gives it vitamin C. And it says, Hey, did your cell function, you know, a hundred percent or 200%. And so it says, Hey, if we add this, you, you might not be deficient in it, but if you have more of it, does your cells function at a higher level? Okay. So you can actually pinpoint how to make your cells work better. Not just, Hey, you're dying of scurvy, right? We don't, that's conventional medicine. Hey, you're not dying of scurvy. You don't have an issue with vitamin C, but if I had more vitamin C, would I feel better, function better, lose more weight, have better cognitive function, better hair possibly. And that's what a micronutrient test is going to show you for all the vitamins and minerals, the full spectrum. Yeah. It's a powerful test. And think, and, and you and I both know this from working with so many people. If somebody does have a deficiency in zinc, mm -hmm. what that does to their immune system is, is such a big deal. Same thing with vitamin D. If somebody's yeah. low in vitamin D and you find that out and you can give that to them, what that does for their immune system, their bone density, their brain health, their mood, overcoming depression, anxiety. So to me, it really is blind, mind blowing that every single doctor in the country should probably be running some form of a micronutrient test to actually know, because there are doctors out there, you and I see this, prescribing medications, when yep. in fact it might be a single nutrient deficiency of vitamin C or magnesium or calcium or zinc or selenium for the yeah. thyroid. I mean, this affects the body in such a big way. So I love that this is one of the baseline yeah. things that you do in your clinic to start off is, Hey, are you deficient in nutrients? And sometimes people are taking vitamins and supplements they don't even need because they don't actually know. And this is why testing is so critical. So we talked about yeah. micronutrient tests. Talk to me now, talk to me now about what are some of the, your other favorite forms of tests that you do and you think people may consider, especially based off of different symptoms and conditions? Yeah, absolutely. Um, you know, one thing I want to say first too about testing too is it's, it's an educational experience. You're learning about your body genetically. What are your weaknesses and what are your strengths? What things are you deficient and not deficient in? Because this isn't, oh, a one-time fix situation. This is something that's a lifelong journey and with the testing, the more you know about your body, the, the more you know where to put energy or not put energy. Um, so I would say, you know, talking about uh, gut health, stool testing, right? Conventional doctors will look at 
a couple parasites, a handful of E. coli, salmonella, right? It's a short list of things where a comprehensive stool test is going to be a five page report. And it's not going to just show you a lot more pathogenic bacteria. It's going to show you all the good bacteria and the ratios. It's going to show you uh, bile production, stomach acid production, immunoglobulin levels. So it's basically, it's called a map because it shows you a map of your entire gut and it tells us how to put a very, very specific gut protocol together to get you from A to Z. So comprehensive stool testing is one of the key things that I did to overcome Hashimoto's between the right diet and stool testing three months later, um, when you got me connected, you know, in Atlanta, that's what, that's yeah. what turned me around. Wow. Right. I did a lot of other things after that to, to get healthy, but that, did the heavy lifting and got me started in the right direction that alone. Yeah. It, it's so, so important. You know, we're living in a day too, where there are so many different forms of probiotics. There are so many different forms yeah. of antimicrobials versus, Hey, should somebody be following more of an anti-parasite, you know, uh, cleanse and getting rid of parasites? Should somebody be focusing on getting rid of yeast or fungus yeah. or certain types of bacteria overgrowth or Lyme. I mean, right. There are so many different yeah. types of microbes and viruses that can invade our system. And there yeah. are different herbs and spices and superfoods, uh, and, and, and things that can help us rebalance yeah. our gut bacteria. And I know diet is obviously a big thing to, yeah. to go ahead. Well, I mean, the big thing is for like the, the detail, the devil's in the details, right? Okay. You have mild overgrowth take a mild yeast clearing for three yeah. weeks and you're done. Hey, it's really severe. You need to do it for two or three months. There's a big difference between two weeks and two months of clearing something or, Hey, you're just not making any stomach acid. That's why you have H pylori and candida. All you got to do is get your stomach acid up. That's the problem. You see what I'm saying? And then that person goes totally off the rails. They're taking oregano for 10 months. And it's like they're making themselves worse when all it was was a stomach acid production problem. So that's just one example of how it's a huge, it can be a huge game changer. And then for the rest of your life, you know, it's not a candida problem. You know, it's a stomach problem. And because you're going to continue for the rest of your life, have to put a little bit more focus on there. So one test isn't just to help you for a couple months. It's to tell you something about your body for the rest of your life. Yeah, I think this is another profound test. Well, another test I wanted to ask you about, I know that you and I, when I ran my practice, I did this a lot. I know you do it a lot today. And that is a food intolerance or a food sensitivity test. You know, yeah. everybody has their form of kryptonite. And I, one of the things, I just taught a lecture yesterday for a, uh, for, for a nutrition for a university. And one of the things I shared is there are all these different diets today, but, but everybody has unique a unique biological factors. You know, a, some people do great with a keto diet and some people do terrible. Some people do good on paleo. Some people do good with almost like a pescatarian diet. It just depends on the person. And so yes. I think knowing which foods work for you and which don't is really important. Sometimes doing a food sensitivity test or intolerance test can unveil things that are oftentimes surprising. There are foods you could be eating every day that you don't know are totally Dip, causing an immune reaction, inflammatory reaction in your system. Talk to us a little bit about, uh, you know, IgG and IgG food antibody tests. Yeah. Yeah. So I got, I don't know if I ever told you that story. Like I found this out firsthand. I was really allergic to, to shrimp and shellfish and things like that. And, um, I remember I went to red lobster unlimited shrimp and, uh, this was like two months before I did an IgG test. And, you know, I didn't have hives. It's not like, oh, I'm allergic, like EpiPen. Like, sure. mm -hmm. I felt fine. And then I tried to go back to school and the fatigue hit me so hard. I laid on a wooden bench right before class, face first and fell asleep. That's how much it fatigued my body. <laughs> and people were taking pictures and it's when they were doing that planking thing. And people took pictures and it was like hashtag planking and like <laughs> posting it. And I walk into class like 15 minutes late because I was like passed out. Everyone's just like laughing. I'm like, I don't wow. know what just happened. Wow. So, so yeah, the symptoms aren't just like itchy throat or hives. It could be fatigue or weight gain or just systemic inflammation. And for me, you know, it was chickpeas. We were just downing hummus all the time thinking I was healthy. Um, a lot of eggs, 
things that I was sensitive to. And um, that was triggering my Hashimoto's, my autoimmune response. But that was driven by leaky gut, right? You don't necessarily get food sensitivities until you create leaky gut. You let the food protein penetrate into your bloodstream. Your immune system attacks that particle at that point, right? So that's why I always tell people, let's heal your gut. Let's, let's stay away from those foods for like six weeks, two months. Let's heal your gut. And then your immune system will forget about that food sensitivity. And then you could add those foods in maybe a couple times a week, just not every day. So the great thing about food sensitivities is they are, some of them are definitely correctable. Um, and it really is all about healing leaky gut. But if you don't take them out for a while and you're eating them every day, like I find eggs a decent amount you know, people are eating those every morning for breakfast and they happen to be sensitive. It's going to be real hard to heal that gut and reduce the autoimmune disease, the inflammation, the fatigue, the swelling, the bloating, you know, if you don't get those foods out. Yeah. And think about this. Sometimes it can literally be one single food. Somebody is unaware of that they are consuming that they're eating an almost perfect diet, but they yeah. keep eating one food over and over again. And it's completely sabotaging their results. And I think, I mean, think about this for a lot of people. And if you're listening right now, think about this. Have you ever just the next day you're like, man, I'm so tired and I don't know why. You just could not figure it out. Or oh, I noticed my nose is running sometimes. Like what, like, like what, you know, why is this? Or you come down with a so there are things like yeah. that where your body is sort of, you know, it's it's your warning sign saying, Hey, th this isn't working for me right now. Let's talk about some other testing as well. So yeah. we've talked about micronutrient testing. We've talked about stool analysis, looking at your gut microbiome testing essentially, which is so important. We've talked about food intolerance. Let's talk about a few of your other favorite forms of tests. Uh, mm -hmm. and then, and then in a few minutes as well, we'll, we'll start diving into some treatment protocols and, uh, some, some unique things like ozone. Yeah, absolutely. So I would say one of the, one of the last missing tests is, um, saliva or urine hormone testing specifically for the adrenals. Last time we talked about, you know, I know you mentioned in Chinese medicine, that is like the, I think I mentioned it was the battery. I, I, you, I know you had an analogy for Chinese medicine and, you know, that turns everything on and off. Your adrenals are so, so important. And, blood work, you can't really look at the adrenals. You get one number in the blood, but to check your adrenals, you need to check cortisol, cortisone in the morning when you get up, lunchtime, dinner time, bedtime, so that you get kind of that nice up and down movement, get you up in the morning, get you going to bed at night. And so a saliva or urine hormone testing um, is the key to seeing that rhythm. Um, and if you're, if you're curious about learning more about those tests, I did want to mention um, you know, I've been working on our integrative testing page. So if you just go to my website, axeholisticmedicine.com, hit the top right integrative testing, you can see the different tests that we're talking about. Click into it. It'll say, learn more. You can even view a sample report just to see what is on one of these kinds of tests. Um, and then we do run, um, you know, specials where you can get a kit and a consult for the same price. You can buy the kits online. Um, so yeah, please look at those. But one of them on there is called a Dutch test. And then the other one that we offer is a ZRT. ZRT is um, saliva, Dutch is urine. Um, so with a Dutch, you're able to see that circadian rhythm. And what's, what's amazing about that is, for instance, someone's flatlined. They're tired in the middle of the day, they're wired at night. So that means I need to get their cortisol up in the middle of the day. So we use things like licorice and different adaptogenic herbs and minerals and vitamins to boost that up. And then at nighttime, we might use more calming things or, you know, lavender oil or, um, or even if it's still really high at night, we might use something called phosphatidylserine, which is a compound that actually buffers cortisol down. So we, with these tests, we can be very specific and we can totally change your circadian rhythm with herbs essentially. Yeah, I love this. And by the way, I'm on here right now, Jordan. I, I hadn't been to this testing page of yours. I know this is new. And so you can simply go to uh, Axe Holistic Medicine and you can Google search Axe Holistic Medicine. The top right hand side of the screen, it says integrative testing. Some of the tests I see on here, I love this. You have your hormone testing, gut testing, heavy metal testing, which I know we haven't covered yet. Blood panel testing, the micronutrient testing, 
um, which is under nutrient evaluation, the food sensitivity testing, uh, organic acids. We also talked about that as a, a micronutrient test. So anyways, th these are great forms of testing. People can also, I know, set up a virtual consult with you and your team to go over this as well. So talk to me about the Dutch testing a little bit. Yeah. So again, circadian rhythm, and then you're actually testing your hormones or what you have free and available. It might mm. be in your blood, but that doesn't mean you still might be deficient inside your cells. So this is going to show you the entire cascade where cholesterol turns into pregnenolone, turns into testosterone, turns into estrogen, which turns into this kind of estrogen. So you can see the entire like visual cascade, and then you can get this up a little bit. You can get that up. You know, you can get everything balanced. And it might be a situation where, hey, this is turning into testosterone um, instead of turning into this. And there's herbs you can get to shift the pathways in the right direction. Well, well, well think about this. In that, in that very specific scenario you just mentioned, testosterone and estrogen and that sort of balance between those two hormones, think about yeah. how important this is. Uh, sometimes uh, you know, uh, women will start to have severe hormonal changes, things that can cause infertility, sometimes unwanted hair growth. All, so much of that is due to that estrogen testosterone balance and the same thing fertility that balance between estrogen and progesterone is so yeah. crucial and key and then of course all of these other conditions the balance between melatonin and cortisol the balance between the thyroid hormones i mean it's obviously there's a lot of moving parts here but it's really powerful that you can take certain nutritional supplements amino acids and different compounds and also the time of day you take them matters that's why sometimes working with a physician who practices functional medicine like yourself can help people achieve better benefits because there are so many little nuances here that matter Oh yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Like, again, the, the devil's the, the detail, you know, the devil's in the details. So, um, yeah. And that test also shows melatonin and it shows dopamine, your serotonin, glutathione. Wow. So the Dutch also has some organic acids components to it that are really important to figuring out those hormones. Um, but you know, you think about men, low testosterone, sometimes that's going into estrogen, right. Um, causing unwanted fat, uh, ED, different things like that. So again, you can see the exact pathway and very specifically, not what to take, but how much to take, when to take it. Those are details that you need to figure out. Jordan, let me ask you this, because I'm curious, because I know what I saw in practice. Now, this was, you know, uh, you know, I've been in full-time practice for seven years. So that being said, I'm curious when you're looking at women and men today with all of this testing you do, what are the, maybe what are, you know, the three most common conditions and things you're seeing in women in some of the testing and in men, like I would guess men, you know, high, low, te low, free testosterone yeah. is super high on the list. But I'm, I'm curious what you're seeing between women and men in this testing. Yeah, men definitely seeing that low, low testosterone, sometimes with high testosterone or with high estrogen. I mean, you're getting that, you know, tipping. Um, and then in, in females, you're getting the opposite. You're getting the um, or no, same thing. Yeah, you're getting high estrogen, low progesterone. So that's kind of the teeter totter you're seeing on both sides. Yeah. Um, and then with the cortisol, which that, that the cortisol is what starts this whole hormone yeah. problem. I always fix that first. I said, we're not even going to necessarily touch some of these hormones until we fix this first. But, um, a lot of people are flatlined. They're not, their cortisol is not coming up in the middle of the day and it's not dropping at night. Like it's supposed to. And that's why people are tired during the day and they're not sleeping well at night. Now I'm curious, Jordan, let's talk about just treatment a little bit here with this. What are some of this? And I know it's going to be personalized for everybody. This is why you do your consultations. But what what are some of the strategies for cortisol that that, that, that you try and that, that you use? I, I imagine licorice root is one. What are some of the things you use for cortisol? Yeah. Well, I always tell people, hey, holistic medicine isn't just natural medicine. It's you treat the whole problem. So if you're going to treat the whole adrenal cortisol problem, you have to give your adrenal glands because they're making cortisol you have to not only give them the vitamins and minerals for that a lot of people get that part right at least but you need to give the herbs like ashwagandha so your body can mentally manage that stress response the one that pretty much everyone misses is you got to give the adrenal hormones 
which is pregnenolone and DHEA. Pregnenolone turns into cortisol, okay? And your adrenals make DHEA. So you have to get that ratio right. And that what that does is that takes a, it takes a burden off your adrenal glands so they can actually rebuild. They're never going to rebuild if you keep making them work as hard as they possibly can. You got to give them the hormones. So a lot of people miss that. And then lastly, it's just the lifestyle component. I mean, if you're just stressed out the wazoo all the time, right. it, it's just not going to work right. You know, we got we to gotta talk about life a little bit. So I think if you address all the components, um, those collectively, that's how you actually fix the problem, along with using herbs to regulate the cortisol levels, um, you know, kind of manually, if you will. I'm so glad you said that because th this is why, you know, I refer, you know, the, the, the doctors I refer the most people to are yourself and my friend, Dr. Chris Motley and, uh, another friend, you know, Dr. Uh, Dr. Anis Kalaf, but you three, I always refer to you because there are, and when I say few, I mean, hardly any, even in the functional medicine space, so few doctors are treating the whole person. We know in the, if you, somebody goes to the dictionary right now, looks up the definition of health, it's wholeness or health in body mind and spirit. If somebody isn't getting their mind or spirit right, if they don't understand and they're not working with their doctor, someone like yourself saying, here are ways you need to reduce stress to get cortisol down. Here are some lifestyle changes you need to make, ways to improve your sleep, you know, you know, times of day to be outside, all of these little things, and then recommending the food and then the herbs and supplements. I mean, you know, doing that is so key. And I think that's really where people start to see breakthrough results is when they have a doctor who creates a personalized plan for them that's unique to them that then is addressing all of those different factors of body, mind, and spirit. I think because you have seen this, I had so many people when I ran my practice who, and I ran it, you know, just like you ran it to where they would come in and they would say, well, I've actually been to natural doctors before. I've been to a functional medicine doctor. I've been to an integrative medical doctor or a chiropractor or someone else. And I got, here's what I used to hear all the time. I got a little bit better or I got 50% better, but I don't feel like I'm all the way better. And then it was doing, you know, creating that personalized plan and sometimes doing testing, or sometimes you don't always have to, but, but creating that personalized plan for those people was so crucial in seeing those breakthrough results. I'm sure you see the same thing. Yeah. I mean, uh, you know, it's the whole onion analogy. You know, it's the different layers or some of the, to talk about a car. Hey, are we going to just spray new, you know, paint over this thing? Or are we going to sand it down, weld the holes that are there, right? Put the base coat, put the clear coat. Like I like to just start from the, the bare bones and do it the right way. Cause yeah. that, that's exactly what happens. People, Hey, you got an adrenal problem, take an adrenal complex. Hey, take a digestive support. I mean, you're just like shotgunning a bunch of supplements at people and then they feel better for a couple months, but then you got nowhere to go because you kind of treated everything and you should have done it layer by layer, a hundred percent correctly, each layer. And that's how you're going to get from A to Z. So yeah, I and, and especially with, with the, com and especially with the complex conditions, if yeah. somebody has autoimmune diseases, we're talking about almost every time if somebody has a severe autoimmune condition like Hashimoto's thyroiditis, rheumatoid arthritis, lupus, fibromyalgia, chronic fatigue syndrome, th th these are complex conditions and, and you really need to get to the root of it, the root cause in order to help it heal. And I know this is one of the things you focus on is sort of root cause medicine. And with that, let's talk a little bit about, I do want to talk about ozone because this is a treatment that you've actually used in your practice for numerous things. In fact, well, why don't you tell us what ozone is and what, and what, what are the most common conditions you treat with ozone? Yeah, absolutely. I got, I got hooked on ozone, uh, just personally doing it in the clinic. And I did a series about two years ago, um, on myself for about six weeks. And it's the best that I felt since I was like in high school or so, you know, I mean, I felt like Superman and a patient now calls it super blood. Because she also felt the same way. So huge advocate. But the way that ozone works is, you know, I believe with especially autoimmune issues, a lot of problems are hidden infections, right? Candida, that's kind of a hidden underlying infection. And with modern medicine, all we have pretty much is uh, antibiotics, which treat bacteria. But we don't have a lot for you know, viruses and, and a lot of other hidden infections that modern science 
probably doesn't know about. They say we only know three to 7% about the human body. So there might be some other crazy species that's not viral, parasite, or bacteria, right? Ozone kills everything, okay? All it is is ozone is three molecules of oxygen. The machine takes medical grade oxygen and converts it into ozone. And, you know, it, so it's going to kill anything pathogenic in the body. And what else it does, it regulates the immune system. So if it's, if it's over elevated, you know, hyper elevated, like with me, uh, Hashimoto's, it's going to bring that immune response down. If your immune system is weak, especially in your gut, and you're not able to fight the infections, it's going to boost the immune system. So it's an immune modulator. Um, the other thing that it does is it actually um, speeds up mitochondrial function. Mitochondria is the energy producers in your cells. You're not going to heal. You're not going to detox. You're not going to create mental energy without energy. Every single process takes energy. So that's a really big deal as far as fixing mitochondrial issues. Um, again, organic acid testing shows us mitochondrial pathways and things like that. But ozone is a great supplement that can, that can boost that. And the great thing is the byproduct of ozone is oxygen. So you even oxygenate your body. So again, there's just so many great things that, you know, but in a nutshell, that's some of the main properties of ozone. Talk to me about the, the conditions that you most commonly treat and see great results with, with, with ozone. Yeah. Lyme's is a big one, chronic fatigue. Um, cause with or, or Epstein-Barr virus, any kind of infectious viral, um, condition needs chronic upkeep with keeping those levels at bay, keeping those levels in jail. And so ozone does that. A lot of my you know, patients with that, they go through a series and then they come back every month or two to make sure that those pathogens do not come back again. Um, but yeah, definitely chronic fatigue. Even my patients have been exposed to mold. That's a big one because the mold yes. is just stuck in all your cells. And to clear that out and kill that, ozone is really good. That's, that's how they deodorize things is they use ozone actually and killing mold. So those are some of the, the main conditions, um, any kind of infection or chronic fatigue syndrome or any autoimmune condition, we're trying to balance that immune system. Um, and then the last one I would say is leaky gut because you can do, um, ozone rectally actually, and get it into the colon and that creates a mucous membrane and heals leaky gut as well. Wow. Powerful. I know another thing you've used it for, you do something called prolozone. I remember mm -hmm. you talking about, and that's good for chronic pain, correct? Absolutely. Prolozone creates um, it's B vitamins and uh, a couple of different compounds along with ozone that stimulates an inflammatory response. So that's something I've actually been doing a series on my shoulder because um, I dislocated my shoulder. I mean, I don't know if you were I there remember. for any of them. Like a quick, quick, quick side note here. So, so we are uh, boating. We're going on a, like Jordan and I, my brother here, we, we grew up, our dad is, was a semi-pro water skier. And, um, you yeah, know, would, would ski in professional tournaments. And anyways, so we, our, uh, growing up, we pretty much did two vacations. We either went to Disney because my mom loved Disney or we went boating because my dad loved boating. Most of the time, we either went to Tennessee or Florida. And, and Jordan was uh, out. We were on a rope swing. And I remember you, you were in school at the time. You yeah. did the rope swing. And I remember your arm coming out of socket. Sod and we had a chiropractor there with us who helped you know, put it back into joints. So I know you've been dealing with some shoulder issues since then. Yeah. I'm glad to hear it's, uh, you know, you're getting yeah. some treatment there. Yeah. Dislocating your shoulder, like 12 feet in the air is just not an ideal place to be. Yeah. I remember that one at all. That one. Um, so, you know, just dislocated my shoulder and then, you know, I tore, I tore the labrum supraspinatus, yeah. infraspinatus issues, rotator cuff issues. Um, so I did a series of things, but I did prolozone, um, and, you know, my shoulder's just doing so much better. Um, but I actually just brought my second MRI in to have a radiologist read it. So I'm going to see, a, I'm getting a before and after study to see, hopefully my labral tear has actually started to reconnect and that's actually starting to heal itself. Wow. Which again, conventional doctors say is impossible. Once it's tore, you got to wait and have surgery. So yeah, just another amazing thing with ozone, uh, sinus infections or congestion, allergies, if you have a machine at home, you just fill up the tube of ozone, 
you kind of push it up in the sinus cavity, you can clear infections, stomach issues, H. pylori, you can bubble ozone water, you can drink the water. So tons of great benefits. Wow. That's powerful. I love that. Let's talk about a few other things, Jordan, here, and then we can wrap up. One, I just want to remind everybody, uh, if you are interested in learning uh, more about functional medicine or, hey, if you're looking for a, a doctor who does virtual uh, you know, virtual testing and consultations. By the way, I know my brother here has people calling. He does consultations from people all over the world, from Europe, from Australia, from, you know, from the Eastern part of the world, from all over the United States and Canada. And so you can simply visit Axe Holistic Medicine, again, Axe Holistic Medicine. And, and you can check out there more about services, conditions, integrative testing, but also just contact them and set up a short consultation where my, uh, where, where Dr. Axe, Jordan Axe here, or, uh, one of his staff members can go ahead and do a consultation with you and uh, create a treatment plan that's customized for you there as well. All right, Jordan, well, I know you test a lot of conditions. One of the things I know that you've also dealt a lot with is migraine headaches. Talk to me about what, what tends to be the root of migraines and how do you typically treat those? Yeah. I mean, headaches, a lot of times it is a dilation of blood vessels, right? And that circulatory and in, that inflammatory process, which short-term is good, right? Long-term is bad, but with headaches with the dilation of those blood vessels, which is, a, you know, your body trying to fight that inflammatory process. So anytime we can get inflammation down, that's going to be a root cause issue, right? Yeah. Everything we talked about is getting to the root cause of inflammation, fixing gut issues, fixing infections, balancing your hormones. All of that is fixing inflammation. Okay. So all of that, definitely everything we talked about in the testing would definitely apply to migraine headaches. Um, I mean, I do think another thing really is posture. I think migraine headaches are an epidemic because we sit all the time. So I do think finding a good uh, chiropractor, good, uh, you know, physical therapist and doing the right, you know, strengthening exercises, acupuncture, it's a mechanical postural issue from sitting it requires a mechanical, physical solution. You know, there's no necessary supplement to fix your posture, right? That takes physical work. Yeah, a couple, a couple of things. I want to talk about thyroid. I want to talk about kids. So I know that you know you see a lot of kids in your practice, and you see kids with. Uh, we were talking about this, you know, not long ago. You see a lot of kids with eczema. I mean, that's, a, that's, you know, affecting so many kids today, a lot of kids with gut issues, learning disorders, and you've seen great results with them. What are some of the things you do and how does the way that you take care of a, a child uh, differ from an adult? Yeah, absolutely. You know, one thing with kids when you know, we're talking about testing today is they're too young for their blood work to be off normally because they just haven't been alive long for the cells to get that damaged. Um, so the organic acids testing is great. Cause we can say candida fungal overgrowth and especially they're having ADHD along with it, you know, things like that. We're able to see the serotonin levels, the dopamine levels. Yeah. We're able to get all that balance. So the main thing with a kid, it really is testing. You're not going to find it on the blood work. So just don't even, don't even try. You got to go straight to like an organic acids testing. And from there, it's pretty similar. You know, we have special products that we use for kids. A lot of them are, are more liquid format. You know, if they're not able to take capsules. So I would say, you know, going liquid and, and then the right testing would be the main thing for kids. Um, so, yeah. And then, of course, thyroid. We talked about this a lot. I mean, you know, looking at the hormones and micronutrient test and even the gut microbiome. I mean, these are all so important. I know for, for helping th th thyroid conditions there as well. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. I mean, with thyroid, you always got to go to the get to the cause. Gut issues, adrenal issues, you, fit, yeah. you know, uh, heavy metals. That's another test that we offer aluminum, mercury, lead, all those block out your hormone, thyroid hormone receptor sites uh, and triggers your immune system. Once you get that result, we do use special strategies. Sometimes we even use higher doses of iodine to detox and supercharge that thyroid. In some cases, you know, we test first on that. Um, we use thyroid glandulars to get the gland to rebuild. So there's definitely some special strategies, you know, personally going through Hashimoto's that I like to use to get people's thyroids rebuilt and working properly. 
Well, I love this, Jordan. Well, this has been powerful. And just a few things that I know that I took away that I want everyone to remember. Number one, again, if, if you're if you're struggling with something that's affected you for years, get testing done. I mean, and, and even for me, who hasn't really struggled with much for, for, for a while, uh, you know, Chelsea and I, we both get micronutrient tests every couple of years just to see where we're at, to make sure we're taking the right thing. So anyways, there's so much value in getting the right testing and working, working with a functional medicine doc like yourself. Also, again, you know, there's so much power in things like ozone therapy and hyperbaric chambers and, uh, you know, using the right herbs and supplements and diet. And I think it's important when you are looking for a practitioner, find somebody that addresses the mind, body, and spirit and creates a personalized plan just for you. Not one size fits all something that is just for you because every, you know, we talked about this, Jordan, some people do well with a keto diet. A lot of people don't. Some people do well, you know, with doing almost all plants and just a little meat. Some people do well with most meat and just, you know, vegetable. It just really depends on the person. So I think getting a customized plan is so crucial. And I want to encourage everybody, uh, make sure to, if you want to learn more and read up more on this, also, there's some great testimonials on here. If you want to learn, uh, find somebody who's dealt with something similar to what you're dealing with, you can simply go to Axe Holistic medicine, again, axeholisticmedicine.com, or you can search Dr. Jordan Axe, this is my brother, Dr. Jordan Axe, and learn more about him and what he's doing to help treat the root cause of disease using uh, you know, the, this advanced form of testing and functional medicine. I want to say, Jordan, hey, uh, man, thanks for coming on the show. Can't wait to, I don't know when we're going to see each other next time, but probably here. Uh, we, I need to have you here to Nashville. Actually, I want to have you film some for a uh, a functional medicine university I'm putting together. I want I want you to teach yeah. the week on on testing. So uh, maybe I'll be able to get you up here in the next few. Yeah, I, I need to get up there. But you know, live in Florida, it's like eh. it's a good it's spot. Well, I know. Yeah, you're in some good weather right now. Yeah. All right. Well, awesome. awesome. Well, hey, Jordan, again, hey, thanks for coming on. I know we'll talk to you. We'll talk again this week. I want to say thanks everybody for being part of this week's podcast where we had both the doctor axes here, uh, you know, talking about functional medicine. So thanks again, Jordan. Awesome. Thanks everybody. This podcast is for information purposes only. Statements and views expressed in this podcast are not medical advice and have not been evaluated by the Food and Drug Administration. Opinions of guests are their own, and this podcast does not endorse or accept responsibility for statements made by guests. In some cases, individuals on this podcast may have a direct or indirect financial interest in products or services referred to herein.